Hello everyone, Irene Kraus of Kraus Creations here with what's going to be my first tutorial for my new channel which is going to be on the subject of um, well combining two of the things I love doing which is um, polymer clay and also uh, the acrylic pouring. So, um, one of the things I noticed when I started checking out videos done by other artists when they were turning some of their acrylic pour skins and so forth into jewelry was that they were using pre-purchased metal, um, metal bezels, which is one way of going about doing it. Now, hold on and bear with me as I'm going to rearrange things and bring the camera down so you can see what I'm looking at on my table here. Give me a minute. And now you should be seeing a nice, pretty nice view of what's on my table here in front of me. Oh, geez, now things are sticking to that. Okay. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with what acrylic pores are, I happen to have one I just did yesterday here of so I'm still, um, I just started doing acrylic pouring probably started about four months ago. So I'm relatively new to that aspect of things. Um, but I'm picking things up pretty fast. And uh, up until now, I know I haven't even started to want to work on canvases of any sort because I feel I'm still very much a beginner and I'm practicing my techniques. I've got this, um, um, okay. I bought this package of, it's, they're photo papers. They're five by sevens. This one happens to be by HP, but this is their everyday photo paper. So it's a little bit cheaper than their premium grade. But these are wonderful to do pours on because they don't buckle or ripple or anything like that when you put your paint on them. And the five by seven size is perfect for, I just cut up a cardboard box, covered the cardboard box with some freezer paper and, um, and I'm taping my little five by seven sheets of paper here, which of course you can't see very well because of course it's all stuck down here. But, um, in any case, they're stuck down on here, and it gives me a little thing that I could tilt and pour and do things. This one was, I was actually testing how to do some uh, blowing techniques with. But anyway, um, here's a couple of other pour skins. These, um, as uh, quite a few artists have been pointing out, these are wonderful for making jewelry from. They're nice and flat and they're usually fairly smooth although I've noticed that some of them yes after they dry they might crack a little bit or just be slightly uneven because well like in here uh, I don't know if you could see that probably not. Um, it seems that where the pa one, the paper was the, the paint was a little bit thicker in other spot, spots than in others. You get this a little bit of a lumpiness, not that I'd call it, you know, real lumpy, but it's like it, you know, there's like a little bit of a divide, I guess you could call it, in the paints where this part is. It still has paint on it, but it's lower than the parts that are next to it. But not that it that's in. That's no problem um, depending upon what you do with things, uh, which I'll get into more as we go on with this tutorial because uh, I have already worked out some solutions for that. But anyway, this is one way of, uh, the other way is of course, if you pour your acrylic paint out onto something that's uh, like a silicone or some other sort of plastic or something, once the paint, paint has dried, you can actually just peel uh, you have to be very careful with it because, of course, the acrylic paint just on its own, it's a film. It's a very, very thin and it can tear easily, which is why I wanted to put it on this um, backing of the photo paper so it was a bit more sturdy. 
and I wouldn't have to worry so much about it ripping as I was taking it up off of something. The other thing you can do to create jewelry with acrylic pours is you can actually dip. You can buy these glass cabochons. Uh, you can get them in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, of course, and you can dip them. You use a, um, well, a little craft stick of some sort and some poster tack or um, whatever you want to call it. Um, I don't remember. I know that I used it back when I was in college to, and I was living in the dorm rooms. Um, you take a wad of it and you knead it up. It has the consistency sort of silly putty or maybe a little bit thicker or something like that. But anyways, you, you knead it up so it's nice and soft and a uh, little tacky. And you put a little glob of it on the end of the, the craft stick and that will stick to the top of the glass. And then you can dip that down into the paint while it's wet. And when you lift it away, I don't know if you could tell, but there's a fair amount of paint that stuck onto this and it dries and they really really I'll have to try to zoom in on that so that you can see what this is my biggest one that I've got you can uh, zoom in on it and get a really really nice very beautiful um, what she would call as the this is the cabochon portion of the jewelry item and yes, I've got, right now, I've got some of these dome-sized ones, or rather ovals. I've got some circular ones. And I have some little bitty tiny ones that I'll be using to make some earrings with and everything. Uh, these being this small, because glass is, a, um, that's one of the nice things about working with polymer clay. It is, uh, after it's cured and everything, it's very, very lightweight and so it, uh, it makes it perfect for a lot of things but it's yet it's very strong once it's cured so even though these are glass which is much heavier than the polymer clay with it being this small and tiny the earrings should not weigh that much but of course one of the things as i've mentioned in my intro video i have a nickel allergy and i discovered fairly early on when I started doing jewelry making about that would be nine or ten years ago now um, is a lot of and I hate to pick on Teresa Salgado because because uh, 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 I do just love her work and everything I recently ordered a refill for my deep shine uh, UV resin from her and she sent me this as a thank you but, um, and don't get me wrong, I do appreciate it. It's a wonderful little metal bezel. But, of course, she did not indicate in any way what type of metal this is. And I noticed on the packaging, in fact, on most metal findings, that as they're sold in stores or online or anything, they do not specify. They just say metal. Sometimes they'll say what color it sort of is. But they very rarely, unless it looks says specifically, they don't indicate whether it's nickel free. So I had already decided many years ago when I'm doing my jewelry making that uh, most of my findings in that, if they're metal, I'm making them myself from wire that I have bought, which as you could see in this case, this is artistic wire. This one happens to be from artist wire. Um, it is... Uh, copper wire. Uh, it says it's copper wire, but no, I think this one's stainless steel. This one's stainless steel. This is 20 gauge. And this is another one of their wires, which in this case is antique brass. But uh, this one I think is copper uh, that's permanently colored. So this coloration that's on here will not be coming off. This one is from Mandela Crafts, and this one is an aluminum wire, but again, it has been color treated. Now, this one could possibly scratch off, as I recall, so that's why I do ask that caution when I sell things like that, is that 
sometimes the coloration on them could scratch off. I mean, it would take a little bit of something to do it, but it could happen. So, but I also buy, if I'm buying, this is a, for example, a finding starter kit, but this is, it clearly states, this is from Darcy. It says it is nickel free and it's in the color of silver, which means more than likely um, you can't see. There's a bunch of earring wires and so forth in there. Some head pins and some bar for bar um, clips for, you know, um, brooches and things like that. And even some magnetic clasps, a few of them. A few other things, types of findings in there. But this one is guaranteed to be nickel free. So which means, of course, I assume it's either aluminum or stainless steel. Um, but this one then I can use with confidence with my jewelry making. So as I tell people that all my stuff is going to be nickel free. Now, my what I'm going to be doing is I realized that uh, because I do like the idea of the bezel part being something that's shaped in some way. Um, I wanted to do that com with polymer clay. So what you're going to be seeing here in this video, and I probably am going to have to break it up into multiple parts, um, are some of the th things I've worked out uh, thus far um, in how to make my own polymer clay bezels and to do things, for example, like these do would not need to have resin put on them because they have the glass on them and that makes them already nice and shiny and pretty and they don't need anything in so far as a sealant to protect this paint that's on here. But if I'm using one of these skins like the, these here, they would need to have some sort of probably an acry acry a res resin put over them so as to protect them from being scratched or damaged um, through just ordinary exposure to things. Um, and so, like I said, what I'm going to be focusing in on using these two, primarily these two types of techniques in jewelry making with either the glass um, cabochons or the skins of this kind that you would then cut up in some way. And we'll get into that. So see you back quite soon.